And his first reaction straight away was, uh, hey Arjen, I'll play a banana if you, <laughs> you want me to. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time on the channel, please hit subscribe right now. It doesn't happen every day that I get to talk to one of my absolute musical heroes. And today is such a day. I get to talk to Arjen Anthony Lukasen, who is the biggest genius in prog metal history. Arjen is mostly known for his metal operas under the name Arjen, and he just released his newest album, Transitus. Arjen, congratulations, new album out, already number one on the Dutch uh, charts. As I know, amazing, amazing. All pre-orders were sold out. How are you experiencing the launch this time? I'm always nervous. <laughs> I can't help it. I can't, it's very hard for me to enjoy things, you know. Okay. As soon as I, things become too, too good, you know, things start going wrong. Like with this release, so many things were wrong, there were no lyrics and now there are problems with shipments and oh, and it keeps me awake at night. And <laughs> I, I'm just, I, I'm a the glass is half empty kind of person, you know, I always, when something goes really good, it's like, okay, now something will probably go wrong. <laughs> so is that necessary when you you want yeah. to be that perfectionist because oh, yes. it's yeah, yeah. known to be very high quality material. Is right. is that just a necessary evil? Uh, I think a necessary evil, yeah. yeah. It, I don't like it, of course, but it's what makes me a perfectionist, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. always doubting myself and, and, and uh, uh, I, I, it keeps me on my toes, you know. Okay. Also, like reviews, I, I'm reading reviews now and most of them are great, of course. Of, of course, not of course, most of them are great. But then there's that bad one, you know. And yeah, it yeah. hurts, you know, and that's the one I remember. And that's the one when I go to bed, think about it. And and, and they hurt, especially when they're right, you know. <laughs> when I agree with them, they hurt. But yeah, it it, it keeps me on my... It, it, it's, the perfectionist is a, it's a good thing and a bad thing, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's go straight into the album. Um, you know, the yeah. first teaser you announced online, you started with saying... And now, for something completely different. Transitus. You know that when you say that, the fans are only going to look even more hard for clues for Forever and Planet Y and, and what okay. have you. <laughs> um, but then you know, the album kicks off with some, some sci-fi elements at first and they kind of fade away and they, you know, make room for a more folky uh, sound at times to, to set the stage and set the story. <laughs> What can you share a little bit about the story um, for for this album? Oh well, uh, did this album was set up to be a movie? You know, it wasn't set up to be an Arion album. Uh, Arion is always like you say, science fiction. You know, all the all the the whole Planet Y story and the Forever story. And I was like, yeah, if if you're gonna do a, a sci-fi movie, uh, you're not gonna make a sci-fi movie under fifty million. You know, that's that's totally impossible. That's what it costs. Uh, so I was like, let's do something different. And I was also always like a horror movie or a ghost movie fan. Yeah. So I thought, well, let's let's set it in the 19th century. Uh, let's make a romantic ghost story. So that's basically what it is. It's about a forbidden relationship between the son of a of a rich guy and their black servant, which, of course, is a big taboo uh, in those days. Actually, it's becoming a taboo again. But that's a shame. But anyway, yeah. that's not what it's about. Uh, I, I, it's always weird. I start with a basic idea and then I, I'm constantly changing the story. Uh, even as I'm inviting singers, you know, I write, I especially write parts for singers. Like uh, I, the whole Transitus part was not in my story. Uh, okay. But then I, I had, I wanted uh, Simone and Simons in the story and I was thinking of a part for her and I, th I thought, it would be cool if she has a, more of a humoristic part and like like for instance the angel of death and then maybe he dies and he he uh, arrives in limbo and then i was thinking of about other names for limbo you know and i came up with transit too so yeah it's a whole baby steps basically uh, cool. uh, till the end result 
Um, specifically in, in um, Fanta uh, Horrificum, the opening, there's right. a big John Carpenter feel in there. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. There, there are definitely some Ennio Morricone elements flowing through uh, the entire... Oh, there. It's all there. I feel I should warn you. This tale is not for the faint of heart. Things go dreadfully wrong for our young lovers. <laughs> were, were those guys a bigger influence than any rock band in your life? Uh, not in my life, but for this, yes. Okay. Uh, it was really, in the past with Arion albums, I didn't want to be influenced uh, by, I wanted to be inspired by other music, but not influenced. So I would not listen to other music as I was writing. But this time I thought, let's change that, you know, let's, let's just not steal stuff, you know, or maybe you can call it stealing, but let's be <laughs> inspired. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It was almost like a tribute. Say, uh, a tribute. <laughs> So, yeah. and another person that was, well, well, definitely was inspirational to you, you know, the narration by Tom Baker, who, you know, a legendary Doctor Who artist or, or actor, sorry. You've mentioned in other interviews that he was a big, you know, that yeah, you were a big fan growing up. How was that for you working with somebody like that? It, it kind of reminded me of working uh, your, your album with Richard Howard. Uh, right, well. right. Yeah. Well, that's where it started. You know, it's, it's like I've, I've worked with the biggest singers and the biggest musicians and guitar players in the world. And, um, and also, it's, it's addictive, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, you ask Bruce Dickinson and he says, okay, I'll come over and he's in your studio singing my song, you know, and it's addictive. Uh, it all started with Barry Hay, basically, the singer of the yeah, Golden yeah. Eagle. That was the first guy I asked and he said yes. And from that point on, it just became an addiction. And then you, wanna, you want more, you know? <laughs> the, the drug is not powerful enough anymore. And I want <laughs> actors, you know? For this, yeah. I needed uh narration basically it didn't have narration for the first two years and then i played the first song fatum horrificum which is 10 minutes of totally uh different moods and so so eclectic that people were i'm a bit lost what's happening here and i thought well maybe it needs narration but narration is scary you know that there are people who don't like yeah. narration uh, so if you have narration it has to be really good Daniel is pulled into a chaotic, seemingly infinite vortex of swirling light. He passes beyond all thought and feeling, beyond all time and space, and wakes to find himself in a twisted, surreal landscape. The strange dimension between heaven and hell. Transitus. So yeah, I made a list of people who I thought would be like amazing, and, and of course Tom Baker was on top. Uh, because, yeah, I grew up with Doctor Who. Uh, it was the 70s. I was like 12, 13 years old. You know, I was glued to the, <laughs> to the television. I mean, if I see it now, it's my, oh, oh, God, you know. It looks so bad, but <laughs> it was so much fun. You know, it's yeah, totally yeah, yeah. Uh, Luckily, he loved it and he loved the idea. And he was like, it feels like it's written for me. And uh, I was like, well, it is, you know, <laughs> the moment we knew that he might be want to do it we totally adapted the whole narration to his style you know to his humor and to his yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, arrogance and, well you know yeah. how he is so it, it, it it's uh, and especially meeting him you know meeting one of your heroes and it's a great guy that's that's fantastic this album is maybe a little bit more diverse than 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 other iron albums and allowing you to really write for those singers I think a great example is Get Out Now with Dee Schneider. It, right. <laughs> it, it, it fits into the album perfectly, but it's also just a standalone great rock song for Dee Schneider. But maybe the biggest stars on this album are the guitar players. You know, Joe Satriani is on the album. Uh, Friedman is on the album. How is it, you know, getting this, this, this amazing cast together? This might be your most ambitious project to date. Uh, it's ambitious as in the time that I worked for, uh, for it. Uh, I, I think I worked on it uh, for, for three years or something. It was also my most expensive uh, project, you know, especially with the big names you just mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it, 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 it was an ambitious album, but I think as far as, as uh, um, musicians are concerned, I think uh, previous albums, like, like my previous album, The Source, you know, it also had like like loads and loads of big names. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember Zero One, my album had like 17 guests. Yeah. I think that was the most of all. Might <laughs> still be my favorite. Um, okay. 
like it's hard to choose because I grew up with your music. Um, oh, cool! The cool. Universal Migrators were the ones that I really got into um, in, yeah. into your work, but um, especially you know what Yorn does on on Zero One is is different. Uh, different. Oh league. man, I, I I heard Yorn and I was I have to work with him. It was hard to to convince him. He was busy and he had a lot of other stuff and. And, but I had to have him, you know, so I just kept pushing and pushing, pushing, and finally he came to my home and it, it was amazing. It was so incredibly good. You're not known to be the most uh, spotlight-seeking person on the live stage. Quite the uh, contrary, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, however, you did a couple of shows. There was the Grass Bob headliner show as well. There was the, the, the live albums. A lot of live stuff came out, a lot of shows. Mm -hmm. Is that now something that you would want to do more of, or was those more of, were, were those more one-off situations? Uh, it was supposed to be one-off, you know, because when we did the Aaron Universe, it was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Mm -hmm. And then we did it again, you know, so I was totally lying. But at that point, I was really like, we're only going to do this once. Yeah, yeah. And it was basically, it was all triggered by the the theater equation and that was such a big success and, and it was sold out within a day and people loved it and musicians loved it and that's basically when i saw okay it is possible and we did the aerial universe and it sold out immediately within a day again and it was such such an amazing success and everyone was happy The second show, uh, Joost came to my, my dressing room and I was like, uh, so what do you think? Oh no, I, I asked him because I had to do a speech. So I wanted to already prepare people that we might do it again. I said, what do you think, Joost? Should we do it again? And he was like, yeah, of course. <laughs> There's no question <laughs> Why about are you even asked? Yeah, 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 exactly. So uh, so that's already when we decided to do uh, do another show. And then, of course, we did uh, Into the Electric Castle in 2019. Um, same thing, sold out immediately, everyone happy. So uh, uh, it looks like it, it was becoming a, a recurring event. But then, of course, this happened, you know. Like her suit, so uh, yeah, we were planning something for next year, September, but Thing is, it, it takes us a year to set up a show. Sure. Uh, so we would have to decide by the end of this year if we're gonna do something next year. And yeah, it's it's not looking good, you know, so yeah. it, I don't think it will happen, but at least, uh, yeah, to answer your question, yes, it, it, uh, uh, w it, it would be a shame if we don't do this more often. You mentioned, you know, this this concept or the idea started as a movie. Um, right. not the special editions of the album come with a comic book as well. There, so you you know you're taking the concept broader than just the music. One of my favorite places in the Netherlands, it's the Efteling. Okay. Um, <laughs> and when I heard Transitus for the first time fully, I was like, this would be the perfect backstory for a, an immersive ride in the. Efteling. Oh yeah. Would that, that be cool. something that you you wanted to? Uh, that would be great. Of course, that would be fantastic. I have to say, I haven't been there a lot. I, I was there as a kid, yeah. and I just know there was this donkey who, who shit coins. <laughs> I still remember that, like, like chocolate yes. coins or something. Yeah. yeah, if they would make like a transit to flight, you know, <laughs> that would be that would fantastic, be of course. Yeah. We've talked already about you know some of the artists you work with on this album. Simone, Tommy Karavik was one of the best singers in metal today. Oh yes, he plays he the lead role. But Iron is sometimes also a platform for less known people oh, yeah. to get a lot of exposure. And I'm thinking, for example, about Mike Mills, who you know, did a great oh. job on the source. When artists like him get a lot of exposure and traction because they are on an iron album that's is brilliant. that the best compliment you can get oh man that's so great you know that's so great i mean on the one side it's great to work with my heroes i mean you're wearing an iron main shirt to work with bruce dickinson you know that's 
that's that's a dream come true but on the other hand to work with someone who is unknown you know who later on becomes big that's fantastic you know that's and and i'm not saying it's just because of me you know i i think these people would have made it anyway i mean uh, floor Janssen, of course who you who you know from from nightwish yeah. she was pretty unknown when when she sang on my i think she was 19 or something and then she turns out to be this big star but she would have anyway you know whether she would have been on my album or not so yeah it's it's i'm always looking for new talent as well and yeah. uh, basically on every album i want to have some some big names and some uh, singers that I really think are great. Uh, it's it's a great feeling. Like like Mike Mills, you know, he he deserves all the attention. I, I think I found him on YouTube and, and and we got in contact and and since then I want him on every album. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I, like I told you before, um, I even write uh, parts especially for singers. So. Uh, for for transitus, I didn't have a part for Mike, and I was like, "Damn, I want Mike on it." So really, I have to think, you know, okay, what 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 could he be, you know? And then, well, maybe uh, maybe the the main character Daniel had like a like an invisible friend or something, and then I came uh, came up with this statue who 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 suddenly uh, came alive, and, uh, <laughs> and I thought that would be cool, you know, for for Mike. And, so I contacted him and I was like, Mike, I got a, a part for you on the new album, but I'm not sure if you're going to like it. <laughs> and he was like, OK, OK, give it to me. A bit anxious. And I was like, well, you, you, you're going to be a dumb piece of fuck. And, uh, and his first reaction straight away was, uh, hey, Arjen, I'll play a banana if you, <laughs> if you want me to. <laughs> That's so awesome. Maybe on the next album. <laughs> hey. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. Right. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I do actually want to come back to something you said in the beginning. I, when you talked about the story, at the heart of the story is this relationship between the two main characters who, yeah. at the time, was a forbidden relationship because a high-born white man and a low-born black girl. Yeah. And you and, and you mentioned in between you know, your sentences, like, that's not really what the album is about, uh, like the racism part. Um, no. But I do, if you know, when I listen to all of your albums, there always seem to be a lot of lessons, or maybe not lessons, but but, yeah. um, but there's in every song there's a message. I hate it. <laughs> really? So, so it's not something that you want to. to no, create. I don't. I don't. I, as a kid, I hated it. You know, I wanted escapism. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I wanted War of the Worlds, you know, aliens who come on Earth and there's no message, nothing. I, I always hated messages in music, but somehow they seem to creep in, into my They're lyrics. So important, I guess. Uh, I don't know. It's it's it's, but I, I don't want to force it down people's throats, you know, like oh the environment, let's let's be careful of our planet and stuff like that. You know, you hear it enough. I want people to escape from all that for a while. But yeah. I mean, uh, between the lines, there's a lot, lot to read, but um, it, it's really, it, it just, like you say, the racism thing, it wasn't part of the story because the main characters were going to be Tommy and Simona. That was, those were my two characters and Simona was going to be the, the, the servant girl. Um, but then I heard Cammy not even knowing that she was dark. Um, you know, I, I just heard her voice on, on a compilation album and I was like, oh my God, what a voice. And then I went to YouTube and I saw her and then I, I contacted her and I was like, oh, uh, and she knew my music. She was even a fan of my music. And that that's that helps, you know, <laughs> you don't have to convince them. Uh, so she uh, she said, yeah, I, I'd love to do that. And I said, well, what would you think of playing the main character? And you would be the servant girl. Uh, w would you have a problem with that? And she was like, no, 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 it makes the story so much more interesting. Am I imagining you're near? I can feel you all around me. Well, there's always underlying things. There's always exactly. little links to previous albums and and uh, lottery between the lines, you know. Yeah. But <laughs> So all the conspiracy theorists about Ir uh, Iron's new album, you know, start your engines because... Oh this... man, they come up with amazing theories. Really, I've, I've already saw theories. a couple on, on YouTube and, and it's so good. <laughs> it's better than I, what I would ever have come up with. And even, you know, there are some plot holes in my story. I mean, let's face it, there, there are, you know. 
Uh, and I recently saw a video of a guy uh, doing doing a, a reaction video to to uh, Transitus, and he he explained the story so much better than I could have. And he had all solutions for all the plot holes, you know. And I was like, hey, shit, that's good. I have to remember this for the interviews." <laughs> Something completely, and now for something completely different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, one album that you also made that was very different than anything else that you've done, but I am a huge fan of that album. Your album Guilt Machine that you did with Jasper Staverly. I know that that album came out of a much darker time in your personal life, and so that might not be something you want to revisit. Um, well, it, after after a dark period, it okay. was time to exercise the demons. But uh, basically, the dark period was uh, during zero one. That was my dark period. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, yeah. and and uh, I I uh, found Laurie. Uh, we found each other. And uh, you know, and 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 that cleared it all up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. basically, when we were together, we were doing uh, Guilt Machine together because, of course, she wrote all the lyrics and played all the guitar solos and stuff like that. Uh, we were okay at, at that time, but yeah, okay. it, uh, I think when you're okay, that's that's really the point when you want to exercise your demons. You know, you can't do that while you're in your depression. You know, you, you can't do anything. But listening back to the Guilt Machine album, I I. I'm pretty sure I won't make another one. Not because I don't like it, because, but because I really like it. Yeah. I hear it now and I'm like, oh my God, this is so good. I, I can never do anything like this again. Well, um, so we, we all the pre-orders for Transitus are sold out. Um, is there another wave coming for people that missed the boat? Uh, uh, I, well, the, the CDs aren't sold out. Uh, basically, uh, the earbooks are sold out, uh, which is... Uh, where is it? <laughs> it's this one. It's sold out, but only in the pre-sales. Okay, so... so still available when you go to Amazon or to your record shop or whatever. So they're still available in the retail. Um, I think pressing new ones, this, this took months to press them because they're pressed in Italy and it was the whole Corona situation. So if we press them now, it would be too late. Yeah. And maybe one day when it will become a movie, because we are still working on the movie. Oh, okay. Uh, it might see the light of day actually. So uh, maybe then, you know, we can do reissues or whatever. I'm, I'm sure if it becomes a movie, it, it will all change a little bit too. It will have a different promotion cycle altogether, for sure. Yeah, but also maybe different different uh, arrangements or different singers, maybe. You never know, you know, if, if a director wants someone else in the part, then yeah. you know, I, I, I'm open for everything. I mean, I would love these singers also to be the actors in the movie, but you never know. It, it, it's... Uh, we're having meetings about it now, and of course, a lot of it will be out of my hands because uh, a project like this will cost millions, and uh, there is a lot of people involved, you know. And I, I don't want to be like, I want this, I want that, you know. There's there's people who know better than me, who have yeah. way more experience than me, so I would never uh, interfere there, you know. Okay, well, thank you so much for your time today. Like we, uh, there are already some videos out. There are still a couple of of copies that people can get their hands on if they're quick and um, I, I, you are never short of ideas so I'm sure that we'll see uh, some more interesting things popping our way. I, I hope so. I always think the well is dry. You know, yeah. after projects I always think like that's it, there's nothing more. And uh, so yeah, I'm glad you say that, you know, <laughs> good for my, <laughs> my ego, good for my self-confidence but uh, uh, yeah, I'm already thinking about about new things and, and new projects. So uh, I have to, you know, I have to keep keep busy, stay creative. I mean, it's a it's a good time for creativity right now. I mean, absolutely. The forced the forced lockdown, um, yeah. no shows for the time being. So yeah, um, yeah. Have, having and, said that, I've been in lockdown for for thirty years now. So <laughs> I had plenty of practice. Basically, <laughs> I'm such a recluse, you know. Yeah, yeah. Nothing much changed for me.
yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I do hope. Um, I also, Iron. I was told by everybody that I know here who knew that I was going to be interviewing you that um, please tell Aryan to take his show to Canada and North America because we want to see him here. Not everybody has the opportunity to fly the grass. I, I know, I know, and I, I, I'm so sorry, but I will never tour. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's this. I'm the total recluse. I mean, the shows we do now are in, in Tilburg, yeah, uh, which yeah. is uh, an hour drive Tilburg. from here. Yeah, yeah, right. So after the show, I jump in the car, go back home. <laughs> you know? And I'm, I'm such a recluse. So I'm, I'm so sorry to say that touring is is uh, is, out, is of the out, out of the question. And it, it it's so selfish, you know, because that means that people will have to come to Holland. But uh, yeah. I'm, Sorry, that's that's the way it is, you know. I'm, I'm, hey, you know what? People I can just have to make a trip out of it. Go visit the Efteling, <laughs> and you know, yeah, catch, I mean, yeah. catch some golden coins. Well, l yeah. last time we did Electric Castle, we had a, we made a whole weekend of it. You know, we had a lot of special stuff. We had an exhibition with the paintings of Arion. We had cinema showing, uh, and and uh, we had like all the all the the bars were selling Arion beer, and and uh, the restaurants were selling Arion burgers. So it was a whole happening for a weekend. You know. So that that's what we on offer want to offer people, especially if they come from far and they come to a exactly couple yeah. of shows. So it's great when they have the whole weekend around it. So, yeah. <laughs> well, Iron, um, I was going to say Iron, uh, which is a funny thing because uh, so many people think that that's just an, a cool way of saying your own personal name, but it's actually not the case at all. No, no, no. It, it really the, the, the album. It was called Aries. Aries, because because it was about an orphan who was uh, found in the month of April, and I'm Aries, you know, that's my star sign. So that's what it was called. But then uh, an English singer had to, s and I was thought it was pronounced Aries. Yeah, yeah. So, so this English singer, I was like, and here you sing Aries, and he was like, no, it's Aries, and I was like, oh no. no. <laughs> really, that's that's how it started, and and then I thought of something medieval which was the ay yeah, yeah. Uh, and then i thought of something uh, modern because the story was also said in the, in the future and then i came up with om like electron uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so yeah that's how it became arion and it, of course it's similar to aryan yeah. my own name but um, coincidence <laughs> yeah 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 so aryan not Iron or Aaron. Uh, no. Arian, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for being so open and energetic and I sharing with much. me. Um, cool. And uh, yeah, please never think that the well is dry because uh, everybody will be waiting for new material in a few years. I, um, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> and then we'll thank talk. You. Exactly, exactly. We'd love to yes. chat again. <laughs> thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And um, I hope you have you know a fantastic start to the week. Thank you, man. Is it started the week? I never know these things. I, I thought it was weekend. Well, whatever. We're, we're recording this right now on Monday. For me, it's Monday. Okay, morning, okay. Well, whatever. It's all, the last six months so, have been a bit of a blur. I know, I know, I know. Wow. You are awesome for watching that interview. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.